card dice. Welcome to this Stateless Code Cast. This is video number 11 in our series NerdDice.com, where we are building a web application to manage tabletop role playing using Ruby on Rails 7. In our previous video, we started working on allowing for users to be able to sign up, sign in, sign out, kind of managing all that user authorization and authentication. Um, we'll, we'll deal with authorization later. Uh, so this is just being able to sign in, log in to your website, uh, let people reset their passwords, kind of all those uh, things there. In our previous episode, we uh, installed Devise but didn't do any modification of the configuration. We just kind of in our, um, it, it did a, uh, a commit where it was just the install of the uh, of the gem and everything and push that as its own thing. In this video, we'll be doing some modification to that configuration file and also um, doing a little bit of other setup. So I've scrolled back up in the terminal. I still have the session, op the terminal session open where it goes through and um, talks about the manual steps that you might need to do after installing Devise. So uh, we'll go through those and uh, start taking a look at them. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at those environment files. So go development. So we do not have that currently in our um, mail file. I'll, I'll pause and make the change to all three environments and then uh, we'll talk through it. All right, so I've got the Action Miller default URL options added to uh, development and test. I'm not gonna deal with production yet that will uh, be something we do when we're closer to deploying to production so I'll just um, deal with production and test uh, development and test for now so that item there is added to both of those environments and then the next thing we had to take a look at is hit an arrow key. All right, back to our, here we go. Defined a root URL to something. We'll do that later. Once we actually have a, a user uh, model and route, that, that'll happen a little bit later. Uh, ensure flash, flash messages uh, in application layout. So. Um, yeah, I guess I'll I'll do that right now. So we'll go into our application. So app views layouts application .html .erb. and since we're dealing with um, with Tailwind here, I'll just pause and write the. Um, the the markup for this and then we'll talk about it all right so i've got this markup for the flash into the application dot html dot erb let's talk through this a little bit this is the first time we're dealing with erb in this uh, in this series so these um, kind of bracket percent bracket percent those are uh, control statements. So this is like a Ruby if, and then the same thing here for the end. And then these again are, we're doing variable assignments here. And um, I guess there's no need to do that inside of the, the markup. Let's make the markup a little bit cleaner. So we'll outdent this. So we're 
defining two variables here, text color. So if it's a flash notice, we will have already, um, so flash notice or flash alert, we enter the uh, control loop where we're, or the control statement where we're um, actually setting and adding this flash to the HTML. Um, if it's a notice, we want the text to be green 600. If it's a not a notice, so an alert, uh, it would be text 600 and then the uh, flash text will be either the notice or the alert. Uh, it's using the um, Ruby um, ternary operator rare system here, so uh, operator. So um, if this uh, evaluates to true, then it will use the flash notice, and then otherwise we'll use the flash alert there. And then we're actually doing the uh, HTML here. This is a div with an ID equal to flash. Uh, with a paragraph in it and it will have our text color and then a couple other uh, Tailwind classes here. I'm going to take this and throw it into Tailwind Play so that we can make sure that it's giving us what we want. This is going to be ugly right now and I've got some uh, some ERB here that Tailwind Play won't handle so we're, we'll do the the text green first. And then you can see here, it's just actually giving you the, the flash text, um, but that's, um, I think that's what we want. Like if you wanted to make this a two, it would move it over some but we'll leave that as is right now. And we'll, we'll make this better looking in the future. We're just trying to get it um, get it done here. And then if it doesn't, uh, if it's an alert, then it will be text red. So um, fairly simple, but um, not hard coding it. So we're only writing the, um, the, the markup for the, for the div uh, for flash once, one paragraph tag, and then we're um, taking these two variables that we're setting in order to um, to, to provide the, uh, the content that we want. So that gives us what we want there. Good enough for now. And then you can copy the device views. Uh, we'll do that later. Um, so we can remember Rails G devise views, and that will allow us to, um, to be able to modify the view files, which we might need to do in order to be able to pass some of the browser tests with uh, devise and turbo. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of bring that in just in time as we need it rather than um, doing it right now as part of this video. So the next thing we want to take a look at is the um, the configuration of device itself. So we're going to go into this uh, device RB initializer file that um, that gets generated here. Um, take out the frozen string literal, and then it says, it, assuming you haven't. Um, um, modified this, it will be um, whatever you um, set it to. So for right now, we'll, um, we'll uh, let's see here. I'll at least change it to stateless code at example.com. It's not the root, obviously, uh, an, an example.com is not a real email address there, but um, we will continue on here. So, what am I doing here? All right, so let's continue on down here. Sorry about that. So we'll leave 
this alone. We are using active record. We'll leave the authentication key as email and we'll stick with the, the defaults there. Did we have the secret key? So secret key here, I am going to use something different than um, the Rails, uh, th th than the, the default here, which is to use um, the Rails um, secret key base. Uh, so we'll, we'll um, get this from our Rails application credentials device secret key which we don't have defined yet so we'll have to go in and do that in our um, credentials uh, and we'll create some environment specific credentials as well so I'll find the other item that I'm going to want to um, use the Rails credentials file for here. So we're going to go search for Pepper. So config.pepper will be devise Pepper. Now, if um, let me pull back up the the terminal here. So now we're going to have to, um, I'll, and I'll let me go into a different tab to show what I'll be doing. I'm going to do it off screen. Um, but we're going to be using Rails secret. And this will give us a long kind of hexadecimal string here. And you can do it as many times as you need. Um, and then I'll, I'll create one of these for development, one for test. And then I'll also create one for uh, the GitHub actions. Uh, so that and then kind of use the similar uh, type of process where um, I kind of pasted that in and overwrote what the, the test um, configuration is there. But uh, going in here now, we can do Rails, Joel's edit. Environment equals test. And we can see that we're up here in, um, this went into, into Vim. Um, so I can um, write this. You can see that it, it, cha it added the file to our gitignore, the, the, uh, the key there. So it gives you a warning about um, you don't put your, uh, your secret key into uh, your repository, but the encrypted version of your um, your test credentials here. Credentials, you can see test is now here, and it's just a long uh, encrypted version of this that you can uh, move into your version control, and um, as long as you don't commit your, your key here, you're, you're okay to be able to do that. Um, so if we look at our git ignore now, you can see that we've added um, the test.key here. I'll do the same thing for development. And I'm gonna do here W and you can see now instead of coming up in Vim I've got it in VS Code so we want to have our 
um, sections here. So our device RB. secret key so here and then I would I'll, I'll paste in just for the time being and then I'll go and change it before I uh, commit it so here you you go in and um, paste in your your secret key here and you can see it's it's fairly long uh, for development and test I'll probably use a, a, a shorter string here uh, for these things so that it doesn't um, impact the uh, the performance too much for, for, for hash, hashing these things um, it doesn't really matter all that much but it's um, kind of it is what it is so and then I'd go in and the hot the device pepper I'd pick say the second one paste that in um, you'd also need a um, secret key base and then you would do a, another secret uh, for that so um, I will now I'll save and then I'll pause and do the real um, work for the uh, development and test items here. So let's see, we added development to the git ignore and then um, we encrypted and saved it. So I'll, I'll pause, set some values there. Uh, I'll unpause if anything noteworthy I need to or I'll, I'll pick it back up after I'm uh, done doing this and explain anything else that I didn't explain yet uh, afterwards all right so I did make one change here so I'm, I'm going to show uh, what I did here so instead of devise underscore secret underscore key and devise underscore pepper I uh, followed the example that we have like this for AWS uh, where you can do that. So we'll save and close that. I'll, I'll go back in and change it again before I commit. But, um, and then we'll change this to device dot secret key. And device dot pepper here in the um, initializer. And then if we want to take a look at what we're doing here we can go in and do uh, since we'll, we're still dealing with test here m equals test rails c and we can go in and um, do things like um, and be careful doing this because it, it will display your your secret in the the console itself so um, in the, this case I'm taking caution on uh, kind of showing how to do this and I'm going to change the values again even though these are test values and they're relatively meaningless uh, just be on getting the habit of uh, being hyper vigilant about your security here so device pepper gives what we want here and then device secret key and we can see that we've got that there. So that'll come in per environment, per credential file, and uh, that'll be used what we for what we do in our in our app. So we'll hit exit here, and then um, I'll stop again and um, add enter different values into that uh, that file, and then we'll continue on looking at the. Um, 
looking at the config file. All right, so I've changed my file and encrypted and saved it again. Um, we'll continue on down through some of these options. Not going to modify any of the defaults here. All right, email changed notification that we will do. And same thing for password change notification. For confirmable, we'll do confirm within. Bring that down to two days. That seems like a reasonable amount of time on that. Continue on. Rememberable, we will allow that for, yeah, two weeks sounds reasonable. Password length, we will bump that up to eight. And I guess we'll go to 72. Um, our email uh, regular expression here. So um, this is. Um, overly um, simplistic. I'm just going to use the um, the built-in Ruby one here and I'll paste it in. So URI mail to dot email regular expression. I'll enter that into the oops into the console here. So you can see development rails console but um, it's a bit bit more um, robust and um, we'll, we'll use that as our um, mail to for our users uh, let's see here default is 30 minutes for timeout I'll bump that up to say two two dot hours we're not dealing in hyper secure types of situations and it, it can be frustrating you start fill out, fill it filling out a form and uh, you get a little sidetracked and you come back and you've lost what you were working on or whatever so um, we want that to be a little bit more user friendly um, let's see here lockable we will go with lock strategy will be failed attempts. Our unlock keys will be email. The unlock strategy will do both here. Uh, max attempts, we'll, we'll bump that down to 10. And unlock 
in one hour. We will warn on the last attempt. Email for re setting for password. Let's see here. Stick with the default bcrypt stuff. Uh, I will turn scoped views on now. It will, it'll check there, um, and it's a little bit slower, but we will wind up using it there. So I'll, I'll, I'll just do that now. And you know what? I'll, I'll just go in and generate the views while I'm at it. Change my mind. So Rails G devise views uh, creates a bunch of items in apps views devise. think we're yeah I don't think we need to scope here so we'll leave that as is uh, I think we're only going to have one one scope here so we don't need to touch that um, Continuing on, navigational formats. Okay, we don't need to worry about the Internet Explorer. We're not going to support Internet Explorer, this is 2022. Uh, and then I'll add here Turbo screen, Stream as a um, so we'll do that and I think we're good to go in terms of our configuration. Let's run Rubicop here. Block has too many lines. So we will just disable that for the device initializer because we can't get around the, um, the block length. Um, metric here. So we'll go up to Rubocop. And we'll add in 
exclusion. Block length. Exclude I'll exclude the whole config initializers directory for that. Should be down to three, all correctable. Config initializers. Did I spell it wrong? Do I need the star pattern there? Yes. was the cause. Down to three. They're all auto-correctable. And I don't... care too much about either of those. All right, we're working there. Let's see our change to the array of symbols. Uh, Autocorrected to that. And the other thing I need to do is uh, create a, um, at least I think I do, a um, environment equals GitHub Actions. So I'll um, set this up and then I will um, I guess I'll, I'll save the version here let it write and then I'm going to change my git ignore here so that it goes into the build overwrite files instead so we will move in our git ignore here. So it'll be dot github. dot key dot s dot key dot github actions and then we'll move that um, after 
after we we'll move both files after we edit them. Um, so I will pause and do that. All right, so we have these um, GitHub actions items here. So we're going to take these and we're going to move them into the build over write files so that the I guess it doesn't really matter where I keep the the GitHub Actions dot key. But anyway, we'll, we'll rename now this file. that renamed and now we will to move it to whatever we said in our get ignore here all right now when we do a git status have okay so the test.yaml. dot um, ink there is um, is showing up but the uh, the key is not that's what we want and then we'd want to in the main.yaml here we'll do a similar action here where we run this and we'll be doing build over write files it'll be to config I guess I can just make that part of the other run block there to config credentials I think that will give us what we want. And then I will 
need to put the yes let me I'll pause and research how to get that uh, key into the github action all right so this is how I think I'm gonna go about doing this so uh, I added a new environment variable here uh, test key which needs to be printed out correctly here so I should be able to do this now and if I go into my repo and go to our secrets here we can add a new repository secret here um, that we'll make here and then we'll um, we'll set that as um, um, as the value there so I'll, I'll pause add that in and then we'll see if uh, this will work on the github action so I'll stop that and save it and uh, then try to commit and push all right so I've got that done I also um, added um, we're referring to a secrets uh, rails master key here in the uh, later on in the build so I added that one as well so you just paste the thing in it shows in your um, your uh, repository secrets and then you, they're available to you in your um, your github action so now let's take a look at our environment here so That looks okay. Apps use device and config credentials. Uh, we've modified all these other things. We'll run Rubocop. No offenses. Make sure that nothing. That's fine. That's fine. That is intended. Uh, credentials changed but we're not committing the key the uh, development and test we changed and then the device initializers we changed we added the uh, test.yaml dot um, encoded github actions there uh, we added the app views device that we generated and then we added the uh, the config credentials um, folder so we'll um, do a git add here, make double sure that we didn't, that we don't have any keys staged here. Config. All right, I think we're good. So what we'll do now is we'll write our commit message I'll pause and do that. All right, I've got my commit message here. Um, I'm going to save it, and you can see here I forgot to save the main main.yaml, so do that as well. Go and close to the right. Make sure we don't have any other items that we forgot to add. And we'll just add that in. And then we'll do a git commit no edit date equals now sign it. Mend. All right, so we should be able to push now to the repository and see how this build action runs here. I am a 
about 3070 that it's not going to work. So we'll pause and see how it goes. So we do have a failure here. And if you look here, we've got an issue related to the in active support message uh, encryptor here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can it's uh, failing on this action building build and test with mini test. I'm wondering if the inclusion of this Rails master key here but not elsewhere uh, is a problem. So I'm going to see if commenting that out does anything. Get at it. And then we'll force push. See how that goes. All right, so that got us to green. So we'll go back in. I had commented that out. We'll just remove it entirely and use the um, the secret key um, that we've got in that uh, GitHub Actions uh, file. And we've got it in all of our environment files there. So we'll we'll do one more git add here. One more amend. One more push. Let that finish. All right, so our commit is what we intend. Go into our issue and edit it. Oops, edit the description. it go into our project make sure that our subtask gets oh we we're here and now we can move that to done and see you in the next video thanks for watching this stateless codecast be sure to like comment subscribe and spread the word you can follow us on social media at stateless code until next time keep coding and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.